All right, stop playing around. Guys, I've been looking all around this room for good lighting and um, I found this spot and it's super hot. Like it's so hot right now. But I promise you guys I would make this video. So let me get my notes. So I have a bunch of notes, a bunch of things I want to talk about. So in today's video, as you can see from the title, I will be doing a why I converted to Islam, all the reasons I actually converted to Islam. I know in my last video, I sorry, I didn't really like explain why I actually converted to Islam. It was more like what happened after I converted to Islam, and so it got really emotional and. Uh, I didn't really mean to do that. So just to recap, in my last video, you guys know that I kind of started this journey basically trying to be a good Christian, going to church a lot, uh, praying more, studying the Bible more. So sorry if you guys see me looking at the viewfinder. It's kind of hard not to look, not gonna lie. This happened in the very beginning. I ended up telling my mom that I wanted to go to one of my old friends churches so I knew that her dad was a pastor so I actually wanted to go there to see her and you know see how the environment is my uncle did have a church um, I wasn't really involved with it to be honest I didn't really like it my family holds a lot of drama and my mom didn't really like it either so we were you know trying to i guess find other churches but you know things in life was going on so it wasn't really a priority but for me it was i was trying to be a good christian i was trying to get closer to god so my solution was going to another church by myself no problem right so i ended up texting one of my old friends we're not really friends <laughs> she was uh just someone I knew from high school. I didn't hesitate. I texted her. I asked her for the church's at her church's address. Next day, I went to church. <laughs> um, I told my mom actually, and she was very excited. Uh, of course, she's Christian. She's very excited. She wants me to have a close relationship with God. So I went. The church was relatively small, which is fine. Uh, they greeted me. They hugged me and all they asked for my number and everything and um everything was fine until the pastor started his sermon so <laughs> lingered in my mind for a while he said that um that it was okay to show off it was okay to show off i guess god's blessing it shouldn't be our fault that other people get jealous jealousy is evil but it is from the devil you know it's not something that we should feel he actually ended up mentioning his cars his lifestyle his kids how awesome his family dynamic is so this is when i kind of started to question a lot because what causes people to get jealous so why should we promote showing up why not just prevent it i know that jealousy is not really in a motion that people like elicit by themselves it usually happens when you lack something in your life and when you see someone else with it that's when you get it or when you see like their family dynamic or their cars their church their lifestyle that's when you start to like compare it to yourself i don't believe like it starts from an evil place jealousy is like a response is what i'm trying to say it kind of rubbed me the wrong way what he said and um I didn't really like the message it didn't really make sense to me now a lot of things don't make sense to me you guys gonna hear my other stories but so in my own family there is a lot of hypocrisy one of the scenarios is basically my dad he goes to church in the morning on Sundays but he starts getting ready around 8 to go to the bar and let's just say he works at a bar and let's just say I know he has a lot of fun now this is where i want to say that your actions do affect a lot of people around you especially like if you're especially if you're a parent your kids are going to see that why do you do this and then do that after you know one of the things that i observe from my parents every time they go to church especially my mom 
it takes her a few hours to get ready now i know women take a long time generally it's the it's the small thing so like my mom she packs on a bunch of makeup i don't really know why you're going to church she wears a bunch of waist trainers i know this because i have to help her like i have to help her get dressed i have to help her with makeup my mom she wears her highest high heels her waist trainers she's gotta look skinny the jewelry like packs on gold like every finger on her it's not just her like i've seen people at my church and it's not it's a lot my mom she suffers like with depression and uh, it just never made sense to me that you go to church so often you have i guess that faith that love for god yet you don't seem to trust him she's always in distress she's always worried and this has been going on for like pretty much my whole life now that she goes to church more often that it's even more amplified i guess i was thinking like oh she's going to church more often she's gonna be better now but no like she goes to church more often she thinks about it more therefore she gets depressed she gets more sad she gets more jealous of other people like she's not taking what she's learning from church into her life i know a lot of people just go to church to have fun going to church became almost like a a party or like a a celebration a festive thing they don't actually go there to take what they learn and then implement it into their life do you guys know what leg lengthening is yeah me neither i'm gonna have to explain something that i can't really explain so I'm, I'm gonna need you guys to bear with me and if I look at my notes, I'm sorry. So this happened a long time ago. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life, but it happened when I was 15. I believe my brother was like 17 or 18. My church does this thing in the last few minutes of church. They start singing, they start praising. Everyone gets wild or riled up. If you guys don't know my pastor, what I mean is my uncle. But he brought up this man up to the altar now there were already four huge men in the altar like in the stage and they immediately grabbed him right they sat him in a chair they showed like i guess us the audience how his legs were un uneven now um they did look uneven but the problem is he was moving around a lot you know the men the four men the way they were grabbing him um his shoulders like he had no balance me and my brother the whole time we were looking at each other like whoa what's about to happen we don't know this is when my pastor starts doing something that he starts speaking in tongues tongues now my family they are pentecostal christians the pastor was yelling in the microphone today this man will be healed in the name of jesus everything in the name of jesus now if you guys don't know what speaking in tongues is let me try to explain it the best way i can you're literally speaking in a different language no one knows what you're saying but you're just shouting this different language apparently it's like a miracle out of the name of jesus lift your holy voice in this place tonight you can find speaking in tongues in acts 2 4 in the bible it basically says whoever starts speaking in an unknowable language is filled with the holy spirit now what do i mean with filled with the holy spirit basically you get like this your body well like my mom the she's had it before the way she's explained it is like her body starts tingling you guys know when you're sitting on the toilet for way too long right and then you get up and you can barely get up because your legs kind of go out they like just give up on you right but then after like a few minutes after you start feeling that tingling sensation but basically that on your whole body that's what how my mom explained it that's how she's felt it before it's basically like a religious ecstasy he was basically trying to make his legs even the thing was those four men around that one guy were moving him there's no way like they're moving him and then he's 
everybody's like screaming like wow it's a miracle his legs are healed Ooh, i'm trying to get to jana you know okay his legs look way better even now me and my brother talk about this a lot i we know that the four men around him were moving his shoulders or moving his waist and he had no control of his hands because they were just trying to grab him and stuff just trying to move him around his legs were sat up on another chair so his body was like this and his legs were out he was sitting on a chair and then his legs were on another chair right here now thank you Lord. Praise you, Jesus. It's hard Thank to say you, it God. with this. Thank you, Lord. Come out in the name of Jesus. So Come out right now in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Thank you. Come out all the way. Yes. Come out right Thank now you, in Jesus' name. Come out. Close, all the guys. way. All the way. Yes. Come out in the name of Jesus. That's almost, almost there. Almost there. Come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I've never had this not work. And I think this is the story of why my brother is actually agnostic. Like my parents don't know. Yeah, it's crazy because now I'm Muslim and he's agnostic. It's because of hypocrisy. It's because of these weird things that are fake. They're fake. Now, that's just my theory of what happened. Like the four men moving him around to make it look like his legs was moving until it became even but um yeah to this day i don't really know what happened i tried to explain what happened i hope you guys understand what i meant by leg lengthening and what they do and whatever so this next story is actually of my brothers i wrote it down and it's our story now at the end of like the sermon my pastor calls people up in need of jesus so one of the people he called up was my brother. So my brother didn't hesitate, he just went up. My uncle starts praying, he has his hand on my brother's forehead, and then my brother says he feels a blow on his face. When the pastor blows on your face, you're, it's supposed to overwhelm you with the Holy Spirit, and you're supposed to faint or fall. My brother didn't fall. <laughs> my brother has his eyes closed, because you know, he's pretending to pray. He didn't know, like, the pastor was actively trying to make him be filled with the Holy Spirit. So to give this more context, there's this term called slain in the spirit. Pastors do it differently. My pastor, he just blows on your face, like, like literally just attacks you with his breath. No, so I've seen and I've seen other pastors do it like with a towel and they'll just hit you with a towel on your forehead. <laughs> And you see just these people drop and apparently they're slain in the Holy Spirit. Supposed to help you anywhere in your life, like mentally, physically, financially, anything. My brother didn't fall the first time. So what my pastor did, he grabbed his finger and then he just pushed him. My brother, after the first two times, he was like, F it, I'm gonna fall so it can be over. Once he falls, people start um, celebrating, screaming. <laughs> Me and my brother never brought up this incident again until I became Muslim. It affected me a lot because it, it didn't feel right, it didn't look right. Now sometimes I wonder like, what if my brother didn't fall? What if my brother like, didn't satisfy him? Would people think there's something wrong with him? Would the pastor look like a fool? I don't know. Guys, my church was really weird. <laughs> if you haven't watched my first video, I came across Islam through watching sermons online. 
basically the videos will just pop up and keep popping up i eventually started watching it and keep in mind i didn't know anything about islam i didn't know anything about muslims i live in a country i started watching videos of debates between muslims and christians and i realized like the muslim would always win i eventually of course came across the hijab and i started doing more research on it i love that it's a protection from men and women so a little bit about myself I've I've been overweight pretty much my whole whole life until I hit 18 I ended up losing 60 pounds I believe and by the time I hit 19 my whole life I felt insecure jealous envy I would compare myself to other girls constantly so I thought about it and asked myself what if all the girls at school were all covered what if there were no boys in my school would I have been so jealous, so insecure, so hateful towards other girls? The idea of hijab is solved that problem for me. In Christianity, you're taught to not resist an evil person. So if they slap you, you have to turn the other cheek. Or if they try to sue you, or take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. The thing is, no Christian would let you slap them repeatedly. They are going to defend themselves as they should. Guys, this is hypocrisy. Islam is the only religion that's not named after someone else. Because Christianity, of course, you have Christ. Judaism, you have Judah. Confucianism, you have Confucius. And with Islam, it's Islam. It's just the name of the religion. It's not even named after the Prophet wasallam. It's just so unique from other religions. You know, I had a lot of trouble comparing the two. I would always like fight myself in my head because on one hand, you grow up with one religion, one tradition, and you have to compare it with something you you barely know. I didn't ha I didn't even have the Quran. Islam was outweighing Christianity every single day. Every single time I watched the debate, every single time I watched the lecture, every single time I studied about Islam. It just made more sense. It just eventually came down, are you going to follow something that makes sense over something that's going to confuse you your whole life? The Bible is so complicated, guys. It's a, it's literally like a bunch of books in one. And you find all these contradictions, and then you find doubt that it's, it hasn't even been preserved that well. We don't have the originals. We don't have the copies of the originals. Basically, it's just a pile of manuscripts that people could find versus the Quran it's preserved in its original language it's not so confusing all the books have the same 114 chapters I remember my mom asking me you don't believe that God died for us and you can find this video translated because it was in Spanish in my Instagram it's all recorded there you guys can see like the literal point where my mom asked do not believe that God died for us. The thing is about that question, do you believe that he's eternal? Can God die? If you believe that Jesus is God, that he's your savior, and you get baptized, that's it. You're going to heaven. You're going to be with God. That never made sense to me at all. What if this murder murderer was Christian, but the victim was not Christian? Even though he did such a heinous, disgusting, crime he's still gonna go to heaven without no justice so let's take a better example let's say you're driving sure and as I said when you break the laws of God God can forgive you that's perfectly fine nobody even has to pay for it God can just forgive God is forgiving a court in America can just forgive your speeding many many times you go to court and they say you're young you have no violations I'm gonna write it off makes sense just no problem let's say another example you got drunk even though you're 18 right and you, you were driving drunk and you hit somebody and you killed a child in that car. Okay. Now you go to court. Go ahead, how does your justice work in your religion? On the scale of the government? No, 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 in your religion, your concept of justice, because you gave that example of driving right, I'm using and a court. So yeah, no, 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 so let, don't, don't switch up your example now. So the exact same example, the scenario now is you've hurt, you killed a child being drunk driving, how does the judge in your religion carry out justice? Okay. The judge mm -hmm. will send that person to jail 
for a murder sentence. Excellent. That's Islam. <laughs> That's not Christianity. Because in your... No, 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 no. You know. You know you've just switched it up. Your example was that Jesus would pay for your sins. And in that example, if you say that you got drunk, got behind the wheel, hit somebody, killed a child, went to court, and the judge says, you're 18, I'm going to put that guy in jail for you. That is not justice. That is not mercy. I will admit that I didn't know much about Islam before converting, but a lot of it was my book was untrustworthy. There were a lot of contradictions, the hypocrisy, the weird things that happen at church, the leg lengthening, the screaming and shouting. They like guys, they literally look possessed. The fakeness of slaying someone in the Holy Spirit. People can say whatever they want about Islam, that it's barbaric, anti-feminist, that it oppresses women. Whatever you want to say about Islam is your opinion. But the thing is, Islam is the truth. Islam makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up. I know maybe later after I even post this video that other things are gonna come into my mind of things that have happened that have made me want to become Muslim. This is all I could think of for right now. It didn't take me a lot to convert to Islam. It was just a lot of my base, my religion was just falling apart. I converted by myself. It was a lot, but I know Islam is the truth. Allah has blessed me with Islam, which is something I'm so grateful for. So I'm very thankful for all the support you guys have been giving me on Instagram, on YouTube. Anyways, I hope you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you guys next time. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and subscribe. ولكي يصلك كل جديد اشترك الآن